Hello everyone, my name is Carcinogen, and this is a Resident Bio Evil... Master. A Resident Evil Code Veronica speedrun on the HD version on PS3. The final time is uh, 1 hour, 42 minutes, and 41 seconds. The run is on the uh, glitch category. It uses the playing manual glitch. We'll start by not reading the playing manual because we need to save it in order to be able to exploit the playing manual glitch to get a ton of explosive arrows later. Start by equipping the knife. Sorry, equipping the lighter, then picking up the knife. We need the knife for a bandersnatch later. This first zombie here, we want to... Uh, run forward and uh, twinge the d-pad to the right a little bit. It's a precise angle. It's a little annoying. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Not bothering with those M100Ps, just gonna keep going. Three more zombies in the next area coming up. What I do here is I run three steps, then I cut hard to the left. Uh, the second zombie is probably the biggest variable in that room. Depending on where he's facing, I may have to swerve to the left, swerve to Claire's left or swerve to Claire's right. and then just kind of take generally wide angles around the other zombies. The grab detection in this game is pretty messed up. When I go to put away items, I put away the lighter first, then the knife, then the handgun. We're not using the handgun throughout the duration of the run. This is not a knife run, by the way. A lot of people wonder because they see me running around with the knife for a solid 20 minutes. But I only use the knife on the Bandersnatch because the knife happens to be the fastest way to kill the Bandersnatch. We're going to go ahead and turn on the computer here and uh, put down the Hawk Emblem. Because just going ahead and using the Hawk Emblem will prevent us from having to go into the inventory twice when going through the metal detector on the way back. I uh, hold square until the uh, final few characters of text, and then I start mashing X to get out of that dialog box. So crashing open, gonna hug the wall here, grab this, the fire extinguisher. Try to take wide lines around these guys here too because we don't want them to spin around. If they spin around then they cut us off. Generally about the only way to avoid getting grabbed by zombies is to try and take the widest possible angle you can around them. But it's uh, very tough considering that all the zombies in this game are placed pretty much exactly where it would be hardest to dodge them. All the corridors in Code Veronica are actually quite narrow. So these zombies over here... In general, taking the uh, same line through here will uh, pretty much guarantee that you'll be able to reach the briefcase without getting grabbed. Sometimes you'll get lucky on the uh, flaming zombie. According to a document in the game, his name is actually Carl. Fuck Carl. He's actually the worst one. He'll mess up all your other dodges if you get grabbed by him. I'm 
gonna go back this way and use the uh first we're going to check the briefcase and get the tg01 Then we're going to use the key directly from the inventory as opposed to exiting the inventory and using it on the gate because we save a dialogue box there. Please deposit any metallic items you have in the security box. Another thing to note when using this uh, security box here is uh, pressing R1 or L1 whenever you're in the uh, scrolling part of the security box will actually save time because you don't have to sit through the scroll animation. Instead it's like one frame as opposed to like five frames of scrolling to put things away. It saves fractions of a second, but the uh, menus are a lot more responsive this way. Consequently they're a lot faster. I always tend to get grabbed by the second zombie. It'd be a huge stroke of luck to not get grabbed by him. So when going back into the inventory box, the way I set it up was because I had the uh, lighter put away first, I can just go into slot three and uh, just mash until the lighter is in my inventory, then press again and then hit L1 and then hit square to get the lighter back in my inventory. Those other two zombies, you know, just like skate behind them because as long as as long as they don't have aggro, you'll be able to generally dodge them. So now that that's done, putting the uh, fake hawk emblem in. It is actually possible to glitch the uh, gold hawk emblem out of the security area, but using it on the gate does nothing. Unfortunately. So we'll push this seven times. Then we'll push this like what, three times? Nah, like one and a half times. And it creates like a complete bridge this way. Hug this left, uh, hug this left rail over here. If you're lucky, then on the last zombie, you can actually gain a bit of poise and and squeeze right by him and hit the stairs before he can grab you. Dogs are pretty easy. It's really just a line memorization to get past them. I should probably mention that uh, holding the uh, button to scroll through these uh, keys on that keyboard is actually not really worth it. It's better to just like tap for each, in or it's better to just tap the D-pad for each individual scroll. Oh, that was unfortunate. Man, real talk. Even watching this run and watching myself get bit when I know that I could have very easily shaken those zombies off without getting bit is actually quite frustrating to see. There's another trick you can do, which is uh, valid in both the glitched and glitchless runs because you could do it completely on accident. So it's like not counted in the definition for glitchless. If you uh, press the right, if you press right on the D-pad and press pick up on like the same frame, then you'll actually cancel uh, Claire's crouching animation to pick up an item.
Again, that zombie in the middle. I'm never even sure like what the best way is to dodge that one. I just kind of squeeze by him and hope I get lucky. C, E, enter. So on the way to the submarine, head to the right side of that staircase, and then just hug the planner on the left. We're going to equip the knife here, because this is the last time that we will be able to equip anything. before we fight the Bandersnatch. Picking up the side pack here is uh, non-negotiable. You absolutely have to, as Claire. The zombie, sometimes he'll uh, grab you from behind if you're not lucky. But I think it has more to do with the angle at which you dodge him and how quickly he manages to aggro and lunge at you. So it's a little RNG there. The next dodge coming up is a bit of a doozy. Uh, there's multiple ways that you can navigate around it, but uh, the way that I've been doing it mostly is, uh, I suppose I'll explain a little more in a second whenever it actually gets over there. Actually, I kind of messed up there, but I still managed to get the dodge. <laughs> okay, so what I really what I should have done there was I should have tried hugging the two zombies that I dodged past to get in and grab the biohazard card, so that they would lunge at me, and then quick turn and then run out while they were still lunging at me. But uh, I think I discovered that after I recorded this run, because I tried to go for some PB attempts a few more times, but I just kind of got frustrated and gave up, so this is kind of my final result for now. I'll come back to Code Veronica speedruns again later. But the way I do it now is certainly more consistent than the way you just saw in the video. You know, I'm not actually sure if uh, 
quick turning there is faster, or if turning directly for it would be faster. Also, what I should have done there was I should have run forward, let the dog lunge, and then after he lunged, I would have done a tight turn and just uh, circled around him, hugged the planter, and then exited. But you know, I'm not actually sure like what the dodge pattern is for the following dog after that. I don't know. I've kind of changed up the pattern for that dodge a bunch of times. Maybe I should practice it. Because getting grabbed by one of the dogs is probably one of the longest and most annoying animations you can run through in this game. In general, I'm trying to hold off on healing until I get to the private residence. You are most likely to have very close to danger status by the time you get there. Unlike other Resident Evil games, post Resident Evil 1, your foot speed drops only when you are in danger or at around 25% of your remaining HP. That was a weird quick turn. So... Unfortunately, uh, my controller that I'm using is a little weird. So... I was holding down, but for some reason it was registering diagonal inputs instead of just straight down. So... One thing that I absolutely need to do next time I run games on my PS3 is get a better controller or somehow break it in a little better because I should not have been turning right while slashing down at that bandersnatch because I missed a lot of hits. That actually was not even my fault. Dodging that zombie is always going to be 100% consistent. Sometimes I still wind up running into Steve, even though... It's like a straight shot to the door. So what we're doing next is we're going to use the emblem plate in order to get the blue key card.
So now that we're actually running around in caution, I should probably mention, uh, running around in caution, I have no idea, like, the exact increment that it drops your foot speed, but it is not by very much. I imagine it does a little bit. So I would imagine that I could potentially save a lot more time by not being in caution at all. And it does lower your turning speed by quite a lot. Hard right over here. That zombie wasn't moving up the stairs, luckily. Oh man, that's how old this run is. Still grabbing the uh, grenades on that shelf. Actually, you're supposed to have fewer grenades. But it is a little more consistent to grab the extra grenades on the shelf there. In case something goes horribly wrong and you have to use more grenades. Especially on Alexia. Final Alexia, you don't really have to use the grenade launcher very much in Glitched. So the albinoids here, whenever they drop from the ceiling, it is safe to assume that you're probably going to get shocked maybe once or twice. Getting out without taking a hit is very, very rare. Exceedingly rare, actually. Alright, Spencer, you got me. So, uh, I'm doing this live, and, uh, as is tradition... Chat tries to tell jokes, and they try to throw me off my composure. And, uh, Spencer CF14 wins. <laughs> Thank you so much, Spencer CF14, CF614, for the nine consecutive months.
I was going to leave a big, excited nine-month comment, saw your commentary notes, and decided to just make like me dad and leave. There you go. I hope you're happy, man. That's fine, because this is a pretty dead section of the run anyhow. Now that Steve and the body are gone, we can just take a straight shot to the door. I suppose I have to remember I'll only be leaving through that door maybe twice. On the way out, we're going to grab the bowgun bolts. Again, hugging the left side of the planter when the dog lunges. Then we're gonna go up the stairs this way and... One thing you could do here, because inventory is full, we could just go ahead and use the uh, use the herb there, but it actually wouldn't uh, really recover our health enough to put us back into fine. It actually wastes more time, because one more hit would put us right back into caution anyhow. It's better to just straight up heal with first aid sprays in Code Veronica. Or just in general. Bandersnatch over here, depending on how tightly you take the lines, sometimes he'll just outright hit you, sometimes he'll track you while you're trying to move past him and hit you that way. I don't know, man. Bandersnatches are pretty random. They're like Resident Evil 4 random. Don't really dig on those guys at all. Fortunately, the uh, dodge drop for these bandersnatches over here is pretty consistent. I'm not sure if I actually get hit here or not. Let's find out. Oh, yep, I do. I uh, turned a little too early, and now I'm in danger. Which, fortunately, I won't have to be moving in danger all that much. I took a nice tight turn there, and the bandersnatch lunged forward, so I was able to just barely get out of the way. Jesus Christ. If I didn't get hit by that first Bandersnatch, though, then I would have saved, like, a good three or four seconds on movement. Interestingly enough, though, Claire moves at roughly the same speed moving up the stairs. So we equipped the lighter when going to use the, uh... Use the, uh, Gold Lugers specifically so these bats wouldn't bite. Man, I gotta come back to this run and get a 141. Now that I see how easy it is, how easy it could be to get a 141.
grab the silver key off the bed. The reason I uh, take this route here grabbing the uh, red ant object on the way out of the uh, on the way out of the uh, main residence. The reason I do that is because there's less ground to cover doing it that way. Because you're going to have to backtrack through one or two rooms pretty much no matter what. That bandersnatch was not very nice to me coming down the stairs there. It's a little inconsistent dodge. On the way out of here, the zombie on the uh, second floor here, just dodging by holding up. We won't be going into the uh, piano room quite yet, obviously. We need the piano roll before we do. Sometimes you can activate the door trigger by just like mashing while the zombie is in front of you. It's uh, useful to note Sometimes door triggers can activate while zombies are standing in front of them. So we'll start by uh, pressing Veronica, then Stanley, then the guy with the teacup, then the guy with the plate, then Edward, then Alexander, and then... Alfred. <laughs> Unfortunately, the only way to get out of there is to hold up, and sometimes it doesn't work. Generally, zombie bites, if you do get bit by a zombie, cause the most damage in a speedrun, to my knowledge. Sometimes getting backhanded by bandersnatches does a fair bit of damage, too. I believe the uh, zombies in the uh, US version do more damage than they do in the Japanese version of Code Veronica. Squeeze by this one by simply holding up and just hug that railing over there. And now we're on our way to the prison now that we have the other eagle plate. When you grab the eagle plate in the one room in the training facility, you could actually go ahead and do the prison. But it's ultimately going to be faster to do it this way. The game just kind of gives you the option of which area you want to clear first. The uh, dodge pattern is the same as when we came through here with the TGA one metal. Actually, no, it's not. And I also messed up by, uh... I also messed up by, uh... Straddling that wall there. So, uh... Oh, man. 
that was that was not that was not good. So uh yeah, you can you can actually like dodge zombies. You can try to dodge zombies. <laughs> composure, composure, composure. Trying to commentate this game live, by the way, is a colossal pain in the ass. Because these zombies are just very rude, and they just interrupt you whenever they feel like it. So this zombie over here, uh... You basically have to kind of set up at a weird angle in order to hit him with two grenades, sometimes three grenades. He actually dies in like two grenades. You can't just like aim up and decapitate him. I mean, you could, but only with a bow gun. The bowgun is the only thing that will kill that zombie in one shot. Rather the crossbow with the flaming bolts. But we can't use any flaming bolts, being that we don't have any yet, and getting the flaming bolts would actually cost more time than it does to just shoot him with two grenades. That zombie is particularly obnoxious, and so is that one. 90% consistent dodges, but... The other 10% is generally just bullshit positioning from off-screen. I think it's right about now that zombies start to get particularly annoying. But in general, now that we've used the second first aid spray after Dr. Zombie, shouldn't have to worry too much about getting hit. Oh, what the hell? Man, no matter whether I'm playing my run or no matter whether I'm watching my run, surprise at getting grabbed whenever I'm not supposed to get grabbed. It's like I'm watching myself get owned in real time. It's like other Resident Evil games. All the dodges are actually quite skillful. These dodges are just straight up luck. I'm telling ya. Hug this right wall here. That'll get around those bander snatches. Q Wesker cutscenes, skip it. Now we're going to go to the piano room, and we are going to activate the playing manual glitch. 
getting squeezed by this guy. He's hugging the railing, so we're gonna hug the wall to get around him. In general, whatever path gives you the larger running space, that's the one you're gonna take, because that's the one you're gonna move through the fastest. So we're gonna start by equipping the bowgun, then we're going to load the explosive arrows into the bowgun, right? And we have to make sure that the uh, regular bowgun bolts are in the slot right after that. So in doing so, whenever we go into the file menu to read the playing manual, it will remove the playing manual and instead you can see that the regular bowgun bolts are loaded into the equipment slot. Basically what the playing manual glitch does is it replaces the is it replaces the uh, quantity value of the weapon you have equipped with the quantity value of an item in the slot right next to it. So basically I just gave myself 30 explosive bowgun bolts and I will continue to have explosive bowgun bolts as long as I don't equip any other weapon. It always feels good to get that dodge, by the way. I can't really explain how it works, just try to stay on like the right swarm of zombies. Or on the right like just kind of squeeze in. Like dodge to the right, dodge to the left, dodge to the right, dodge to the left. And just try to take a straight line towards the stairs. I uh, shouldn't have gotten grabbed by that guy. Actually, should have gone ahead and shot him. Like I did that guy. So when we go into this room, what I usually do is I buffer aim and I fire, but of course, I had bad RNG, so it uh, actually missed that zombie there. If I pop that zombie, then I just run straight forward. And then go into the door. So now we are uh, in the inventory here. We're not going to combine the uh, bow, the bowgun bolts yet, by the way, because if we do, then the playing manual glitch will deactivate, and you'll have the uh, earthenware vase in the equipment slot instead. There's another route you can run to prevent that from happening, but. This is the faster route, so you have to be careful when you actually go to combine the two uh, loose boxes of bowgun bolts in your inventory. Quivers, rather, I should say. Pushing the box there five times is the minimum number of pushes needed to be able to hit that item trigger up there whenever you climb the box and pick up the item. I have a nasty input, bleh, a nasty habit of buffering inputs 
directional inputs when I go to climb up and down ladders. I'm not sure if that's my controller or if that's just me, but it's more than likely me. I shot that zombie because he was directly in my way and I would have had to probably shake him off. I decided to bite the bullet there and save on health. So on the way back we can actually just go ahead and hold up on the d-pad to dodge the first four guys. But you know, the last guy is kind of an asshole. It would ultimately probably be the most consistent to actually shoot him on the way in. The reason I save the uh, navy proof for last is because the uh, cutscene that you skip actually uh, changes your direction a little bit. So it kind of takes the same amount of time as a uh, quick turn skipping the cutscene there. And you more or less save about half a second or to a second on turns. I'd say right about there is probably the best time to actually combine both quivers and not deactivate the glitch. This section over here is pretty dead for the most part. Try to take the straightest line through here and hope that that zombie just lunges and misses whenever I hit the corner of the desk. 
I'm not sure whether it's worth it to... I'm not really sure whether it's worth it to just uh, run the opposite direction. until detonation. So as you can see, the playing manual glitch just completely breaks the Claire section of the game. As long as you continue to pick up bowgun bolts, as long as you continue to pick up bowgun bolts, you can just steamroll everything. But only until the end of Nosferatu, because basically the second you lose control of Claire and you start playing Chris, then Claire's hands get emptied.
So coming up on the end of disk one, basically all you have to do is stand and shoot. It takes 24 explosive bolts, and then press the button to catapult the tyrant out the back of the plane. Also, if you looked in the top left, you could actually see the rat shaking. D.I.J. It's completely RNG whether the moth spawns poison clouds or not. Sometimes you'll get hit, sometimes you won't. The hard hat zombie over here. I try to take the tightest line around the corner and hope that he doesn't grab. Sometimes he does. But in general, it's not worth it to shoot him. These spiders over here, as long as you take a specific line around them, they shouldn't grab you or hit you with acid spit. It's a little tough, but I'd say it's about 80% consistent. But if one of them grabs you, then it kind of messes up the pattern for the rest of the room. We have to examine the pipe here pretty much no matter what in order to be able to know the uh, exact shape that we're supposed to drill the valve handle later. I think it might actually be faster to take the other line so that we don't have to shoot that dog. I have no idea why I missed that dog twice, but... Doesn't really matter too terribly much, I suppose. I still have my bowgun bolts. It's about a two second time loss, but there's worse things that could happen. In general, I think I'm going to refrain from shooting those dogs from now on. You can usually go straight to the save room without aggroing the moths. Before we leave, we need to open the item box and drop off the bowgun and the grenade launcher so that Chris can use them later. And as you can see, Claire still has the uh, bowgun model still equipped and can still shoot flaming arrows.
on account of the playing manual glitch. It's still force of habit to forget to check the planter before trying to go through the door. For what reason, I'm still not sure, but you would think that 50 attempts later I would break it. I got lucky with the uh, grab cancel. I'm still not sure how to do that. I guess someday I'll get the timing down. Final pass through the moth room. The moth usually aggro's halfway down, kind of hoping that I don't get hit by the clouds. Usually if Claire starts limping after she gets hit by the clouds, then I start to check the herb planner so that I can heal. I think that that is actually a rather pointless place to have an herb planner. So upon sending the BOW gas in there, we can grab the gas mask. I usually wait until now to grab the gas mask, because I think it's fewer turns that way. Fewer turns and shorter lines generally results in better times in Resident Evil games. about 30 shots to down him. I grabbed the first aid spray there, just in case something goes horribly wrong on Steve later. Place the handgun bullets with the grenade launcher and the handgun with the bowgun with explosive bolts. 
So when this guy comes out of the ground, you have to wait for him to scream. If he does like the, you know, he just makes the call of the wild fuck boy. Then you can shoot him four times with the explosive arrows and he'll die. But otherwise, sometimes he'll just like pop out of the ground and then just go right back into the ground. When he does that, you won't be able to kill him. He can only die during that animation. So as far as Resident Evil speedruns go, I think that Code Veronica might actually be the longest game in the classic Resident Evil series. Just saying. So we're going to grab the battery, quick turn, and we're going to hug the wall that the save room door is on, and the spider will always miss. As long as we continue hugging the interior wall and go towards the elevator, that spider will always turn towards the right side of the screen if you hug the interior wall when running past him. Sometimes you can get lucky and put the battery in. But of course I took an insta-bite from that zombie there. So zombies in this game have... multiple, uh... multiple things about them, I guess. I don't really know how to describe it. What the hell was that turn? But, uh... You can generally shake off zombies by mashing the D-pad whenever they grab you. I believe it's easier in the Japanese version to shake them off. In the Japanese version and the HD version, you can just jiggle the D-pad a bunch and uh, you'll shake them off without taking a bite if you get grabbed. But sometimes there's an RNG occurrence. I'm not exactly sure if it's tied to a specific movement animation, but... Sometimes you just straight up can't shake the D-pad, and they'll just bite you instantly, and there's nothing you can do about it. But in most cases, you want to try to you want to try to mash out of it and get the no bite escape. code here is 128, which apparently heats that to 128 degrees Fahrenheit. The Clement Sigma. One has to wonder how... Chris didn't have like a visible reaction of pain upon picking that up, because the thing must have been pretty hot. So if you slide off of that box exactly right, then the hunter will slash and miss. And he won't be able to catch up. It's a pretty tough dodge to make. But now hunters are going to start appearing and so are security cameras.
Now that we've grabbed the doorknob, we're just going to head back to the second floor and, of course, fall into the loving arms of an unavoidable grab. I really rather dislike that most of the occurrences that zombies grab you in this game actually are RNG. Upon using the doorknob, we can grab the tank object. You don't generally have to grab the side pack in this room as Chris, but I like to for convenience's sake. Because it means that I can hold on to my first aid spray if I manage to save it. And also I can take a better route to pick up the uh, red and blue jewels from the tiger statue later. I always stutter step there because I'm never sure what the proper line to take around that camera is. I don't like failing that. So now we have the turntable key, which means we're heading back to B1. We have to dodge a bandersnatch to get to the turntable. Strangely enough, we don't have to dodge any cameras on the way out, probably because of its close proximity to the door. The developers thought that maybe it might have been a little unfair, which is surprising given the amount of bullshit in this game. I believe that uh, this game was actually not developed in-house by Capcom and instead was outsourced to another company called Nextech, which was the company responsible for making the port of Resident Evil 1 on the Sega Saturn. Because this game originally came out on the Sega Dreamcast. Well, that was awfully unfortunate. Case in point. The two hunters out here, as long as you hug the garage door, then the hunter directly behind you will actually swerve to the left. And he'll actually just be barely far enough for you to make it to the shutter without getting hit. This elevator is actually a testament to just how ridiculously stupid Hunter AI is in this game. I 
I'm actually not entirely sure what the fastest solution is here. There's probably about three or four different solutions to this puzzle. But what I usually like to do is I like to hit three, three, and five in order to make one unit of oil be in the number five slot because it takes five the longest to fill back up. And then I hit three, three, five after draining the oil again. So it would be three, three, five, drain, three, three, five. By hugging the right rail over here, we can actually clip through the hunter's claw whenever he tries to slash because his active damage frames start pretty late. Hug the right side wall. These uh, these zombies have night vision goggles, or infrared goggles, because they're actually uh, hive capture force soldiers and not uh, umbrella guards. They're called Wesker subordinate zombies. My guess is they succumbed to T-Virus infection and Wesker put bombs on their backs. Because sometimes they blow up. Hunters are also deaf, by the way. So if you stutter step a little bit while the hunter is moving into the wall whenever you go to grab the proofs, then you can actually avoid aggroing them. Over here we can just hold up to dodge this guy. Same with the next one. Really in the case of hunters, it's really a race against the clock to try to get to the door before they slash you. But sometimes you can take lines that will delay the slashing action. Just barely long enough. Oh, that was a bummer. He actually slashed early there. It's a miracle that he didn't jump or poison me. Because those yellow and purple hunters can actually poison you if they hit you. I think this is about the cleanest line that I've ever taken through this room. Usually I get grabbed at least once by the second zombie. But if you get jump slashed by the hunter, then you have no choice but to use the first aid spray. If you get poisoned though, then it's a uh, run over because there is no blue herb that you could use until the albinoid fight. And then you would have to grab like two or three more green herbs I mean, if you're doing like a casual run or you're just learning to speedrun the game, then sure, you could do that. You could heal up, but... When gunning for sub-140, you can't get poisoned. Actually, you just straight up can't get hit there at all.
so now that we have the other Clement, we're going to go use the proofs and then go to fight the Albanoid. Well, fight, quote unquote. The hell was that line? Man, there is so much human error on my part in this run. I could stand to run it like a few thousand more times. I think I'm about to have a motorcycle park in my driveway. Thank you! This is generally why I don't like to record my commentary during the day. So the albinoid. Which is really just an albino salamander. An albino electric salamander Pokemon. What we're gonna do is we're going to move to the center over here. And he'll be over there, right? And then we'll swerve to the right. Actually, ideally, we're supposed to uh, move the other way. So I actually took the slowest way to get out of here. Like, oops. These spiders actually stand no chance of grabbing you as long as you're fast enough. So in order to, uh, in order to exit, the training facility, we're gonna head into the basement, go down the stairs, pick up the shotgun, and climb up the ladder here in order to get to the aircraft hangar where we found the battery and the spiders. There's a zombie here, but pay no attention to him. The uh, actual grenade route that we're supposed to take is we're supposed to grab only the grenades before the albinoid and then combine them in that menu. So I got extra. And we're supposed to use the rest of these explosive arrows because there's not enough to use on Alexia 2 specifically to take out tentacles because they're the only weapon that takes out tentacles in one shot. It's gonna be significantly faster than using grenades. So hold R1, pop one, and then hit L1 and fire the other. Then you can just run straight through the room and not have to worry about anything. That input drop though. You can see my confusion as I wonder why the fuck I'm not angled up properly to the place where I drop off the halberd.
I'm gonna run into this room and grab the valve handle. There's a specific dodge that we have to take going around these zombies over here. Because if we just go straight for the door, then we'll get hit by a parasite. Pretty much every zombie from this point on has been implanted by a parasite by the population of infected moths. So we're going to move forward a step, quick turn, and then move this way. And it's just enough to trick the AI into not exploding parasites. Which is fine, because parasites are an annoying extra few seconds to get rid of. In order to get around the security camera here, what we need to do is we need to hold up and left and pump the run button, and it compresses Chris's hitbox just barely enough so that you can avoid the first camera and avoid a cutscene and avoid a hunter. Gonna stay equipped with the bow gun for a while to come. Lost a few seconds there by <laughs> attempting to not turn that thing off. Ah, oh, that was really unfortunate. I was hoping that second cross up would throw off those zombies enough, but sometimes you don't throw zombies all the way down whenever you shove them back. And instead, they just wind up grabbing you anyway. Damage in this room is unavoidable. It's like one point of damage every time you get bit by an ant. So about the only way to avoid damage is by killing them. And of course we don't have any such means to kill these guys. Doesn't matter though, it'd be a waste of time to just stand there and shoot them anyway. So the solution here is the two A's, the crown, the spade and the heart? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Don't listen to me. I hit left once, I hit right once, I hit right twice, and then I hit left twice, and that's the solution. I don't pay attention to the symbols. I just pay attention to how many clicks it takes in the menu. I got bit a whole bunch in here. It's a little obnoxious. We're very close to the end of the run though, 15 minutes off. So over here, we're going to take the uh, blue jewel on the left. Put it back in. And uh, now we're going to proceed to get angry while some asshole on a motorcycle is in our driveway. Indirectly ruining my commentary.
I'm just kidding. We're going to keep going. As long as they're not playing music and we're not getting any muted audio, we're groovy. I have really got to do something about the acoustics in my room though, so sound doesn't travel from the outside like that. Meanwhile, in this menu here, we're going to equip the grenade launcher, combine the uh, valve handle with the attachment. Also, we were supposed to turn off the power to the door earlier, because it would also turn off the power to the tiger statue. And over here is uh, best to just go ahead and shoot this guy. So the giant spider over here, the whole room is generally way, way, way too wide to worry about him hitting you, so just taking a tight line to and from the uh, Alexander's Pierce is good enough. So over here we're going to grab the other dragonfly wings, kill that sweeper, it's the uh, last sweeper that we have to deal with in the entire game, the last hunter for that matter. Simply using the knife from the inventory is enough. Now we're taking control of Claire again. We're gonna take a hit here. But during that section of animation where the uh, tentacle is recovering from its attack, you can just squeeze right around it. Apparently I took a lot of damage from another section, or maybe that tentacle does a lot of damage in itself. I'm actually not sure of the damage values in this game. Might help to uh, run it on emulator sometime and learn a little more. I actually rather hope that a PC version of this comes along. But I went ahead and decided to use the first aid spray there, because you can actually tank two hits from Steve before dying. And unless you really, really fuck up the line, attempting to get the no damage Steve, then you will only get hit once if you mess up. So what I did there was uh, I wedged myself in between Steve and the chair he was sitting in, and uh, then I just ran in as straight a line as possible after Steve turned about 270 degrees to the right. 
And then after that, I was just able to hit the trigger before he could hit me, and that's how you get no damage Steve. Now Alexia here, no damage on Alexia is another story. The grenade launcher is faster, but the magnum is actually safer for getting no damage on Alexia. Sometimes you can get no damage with the grenade launcher, but... I would say that if you're uh, trying to get the rocket launcher, get an S rank, then your best option is to just straight up use the grenade launcher and just fire three times. All you have to do is just hold R1 and just mash X and you win. Alexia is no big deal. We're gonna hug the wall on the right side, keep going along the interior and hit the door. There's another first aid spray in, I believe, a lab coat somewhere in this room. In case you absolutely need it. Yeah, the, the blue coat hanging on the hook. There should be a first aid spray in there. But that's only if you, like, really, really need it. So we're using the biohazard key because the power is out and we can't use that automatic door on the right. But, of course, the tiger statue is turned off, so now we can get the left and right eyes. Then head back up the stairs and uh, do pretty much exactly the same puzzle that we did at the end of disc one. Just, you know, arbitrary puzzle recycling. I think this game does a fair bit of that. I decided to aim down at that guy's legs off screen to get him out of the way because I haven't really found a good dodge pattern for him yet. But that's okay, because we don't actually need the uh, bowgun bolts for much longer. We just need one bowgun bolt to take out the uh, tentacle in another on Alexia. Wow, that angle. That actually kind of sucks that the event trigger for putting on the uh, music box plate is not extended as far along as the uh, King Ant object. Meaning you kind of have to stand a little closer into the center if you're going to use the King Ant object in the music box plate. So upon doing that, we get the uh, dragonfly object, or the part of the dragonfly object. It's funny, at the end of disc one, we took the wings off the dragonfly object, and now we're putting them back on. I was kind of hoping that the zombie that I was getting grabbed by would cross up into the zombie behind me so that I would be able to knock him backwards. So with that, we have the final dragonfly object, and now we can proceed directly to Alexia. Just aim and fire the second we enter the room and just head straight for the door. Once again, explosive bowgun bolts take out the tentacle in one shot. That's really the whole reason you want to have the explosive bolts. Yeah. <laughs> 
So in this inventory, we're going to combine the uh, dragonfly wings with the dragonfly object. And we're also going to check the uh, security manual in order to get the security key card. Shoot this guy in the leg to get him out of the way. By examining the uh, item in the inventory and getting the keycard, we don't have to take another inventory trip while we're over here. So it saves about a few seconds. Once again, better to just uh, scroll the keys by hitting each individual key with the D-pad instead of holding the button down to scroll fast because you're generally going to either overshoot or hit the wrong one. And if you hit the wrong one, then you have to scroll all the way over to backspace to delete it. But Carsey, how hard could hitting keys on a keyboard be? Exceptionally hard if your name is Chris Redfield. So in this fight, we're going to fire one bowgun bolt and then equip the grenade launcher right here so that we have the grenade launcher equipped whenever we reach the second phase of Alexia. Generally, the more, bur the more grenade bursts actually hit Alexia, the more damage it's going to do. So it takes anywhere between uh, five to seven grenade rounds to get her to transform into her third form where we grab the linear launcher. Actually, I got really lucky there. But that's the end of the run. I didn't actually have to dodge anymore. I just shot four times. That whole last section is very RNG, but... With that, uh, that is the end of the run. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like what you see, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also please check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. I uh, stream Resident Evil speedruns and other speedruns there almost daily. Once again, twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. And... Uh, that's it. Thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, I will see you guys next run.